cow. Whole lot of llama. It's extreme barbecue as we head to Bovanova. 2.0, fired up. <laughs> Coming to you from the birthplace of American Barbecue, it's three-time South Carolina State Champion Jack Wavemore. I'm Bill Rush with BarbecueTricks.com, and uh, we're talking, I mean, big time. This is extreme barbecue, summer of extreme barbecue. Talk about what could be more extreme than cooking a whole butterflied cow. Bill got the, uh, I've been traveling a lot lately, Bill got the opportunity to go to a place called, or an event actually called Bovanova. Tell me a little bit about Bovanova, Bill. I mean, they did a whole cow over a fire, they did a llama, uh, several pigs, a goat, uh, did I say llama? Llama, you did. I, I love llama. a llama. Yeah, llama, sure. goat, uh, a sheep, bunch of chickens. Let's take a look at Bovanova 2.0 and see how they did it up. Llama, cat. We're at Bovanova 2.0 about to hoist a whole cow. I used to say whole hog, that's normal. This is a whole steer on this great rack that they have created. This is extreme barbecue. So we're with Jeff Bannister. How did this whole thing come about? This started with a, an episode I saw on Travel on the Travel Channel where we had a guy who was uh, cooking a whole cow in Uruguay by the name of Francis Mullen. He's a uh, chef down there, he's very famous in Argentina and Uruguay. And they're doing whole cows and whole animals in a, in a very small town outside, outside of, I uh, can't remember the town, it's just in the middle of Uruguay. And I looked at it and I cooked whole pigs in my whole life and I'm like, you know, that's natural movement, we can do that. And I sat down and told my wife, I said, we can do it. And she's like, okay. I see. And it took about $17,000 later and uh, it's a couple hundred man hours and we had this rack made with that cow. Tell me about these racks and what all is going to be cooked here uh, over the next, what, 24, 48 hours? Bowen over 2.0 right now, what we've got on the, on, the, on the line to cook is we've got one cow that should be running around 800 plus pounds. We've got one llama, whole. Every animal is going to be cooked whole. We've got about, you know, 10 chickens and turkeys, or 10 chickens and three, four turkeys. We've got four goats. We've got three lambs. And we've got three different types of pigs. We've got a La Cachina pig which you'll see normally, a Cuban pig, which is a 65 pound pork roast. We'll have a rotisserie pig, uh, which we, I'll be uh, uh, marinating with mojo, which is a typical Hispanic uh, uh, marinade. We'll be injecting it, and it'll be rotisserie for about eight or 10 hours. Uh, Spitjack.com uh, sent that down for us to use, and it's an awesome looking rotisserie. Uh, it's gonna save us a lot of time, because it's, it's, a, it's a heavy duty, 150 pound hog uh, rotisserie. And uh, then we've got a southern smoke pig that Nard's Barbecue is going to be doing for us. They're going to start at midnight so we can have a 12 o'clock tomorrow. That'll be a, a, a basic southern smoke pig and we're going to do it over peach wood this year and it should really be good. Now this is, uh, we're doing a whole kind of a series on extreme barbecue. This totally fits the bill. What's the most difficult part of the whole process? Is it the cow? No, I think it's getting everybody together and, and, and online for an event this big. The cow will be one of the, uh, one of the basic things, that the most uh, challenging ones for us to cook, but there are much more challenging things. Our, our big challenge with this right here was the 2,000 pounds of steel we had and the 3,000 pounds of concrete. Tell me and about that. What we have, and we don't, you can't see it, it's five feet in the ground, is a steel pole that's 12 foot long, extends seven feet up. It's surrounded by 3,300 pounds of concrete, and it's buried in the ground, and we put that, that square, uh, mast over the top of it, and we built that rack from built that rack from scratch, and it's very similar to the one in Uruguay. I think it's a little bit more heavy duty. If you notice, it's not bending at all. Uh, it, it's, I think we had an engineer look at it and said it was good for about 1,800, 2,000 pounds on the end of it. But after that was done, the basic the cooking of this animal is you keeping the heat on it all the time. You're cooking it slow. We got a great injection on it. We're gonna put a rub on it. You know, and it'll be just a, a nice thing. Now, we, to do it perfectly, we'll be pulling some parts of the cow off sooner than later, but overall, the cow is going to be ready 
you we're guessing between 12 and 1 o'clock tomorrow. So what do you inject this thing with? This is injected now with Worcestershire sauce, uh, red wine, soy sauce. It's just a nice, when you're looking at something cooking this long, you want to add that layer of flavor in there. I'm all on about the layers of flavor. We just finished cooking a 36 inch pie, paella that's good for 70 people. And you know, you, when you build that pie, you're building layers of flavor. And you're doing the same thing on my competition barbecue team I'm on with Nards Barbecue. You know, we're constantly building layers of flavor. We're injecting the butts. We're injecting the, we're injecting the pig. Then we're putting a rub on it. And that's layers of flavor. Then we're using a fruit wood. And that's a layer of flavor. As we go, time and time again, you're building the layers of flavor for that palate to really make that a piece of sexy food. Is this all your invention, this whole Bovanova? No, I'm the guy that talked everybody into it. But luckily we had some engineers involved and some great guys. All of us are entrepreneurs. Uh, so it's nice to have a group of guys that understand thinking outside the box. And I really didn't have a hard sell when I put these guys together and presented the plan to them. It really wasn't a hard sell because entrepreneurs are used to thinking outside the box. Um, Great TV is here in Greenville. Actually, this is Greer, right? This is actually Greer, South Carolina, but Greenville County. With Randall Knight, he is our Bovanova 2.0 connection. I'm the man. And uh, tell me how this whole thing came about for you. Uh, it came about for me. The guys that planned it knew that I'd go out and do a bunch of barbecue competitions, and I'm out every, about every weekend competing, and I'm used to being out grilling, cooking, and uh, they asked me last year to take part in it. And, we pull off as a, as a success, and I did it again this year when they asked me to do it again. Is this the most extreme barbecue you've ever done? Yes, it is. <laughs> most extreme. Now, what's going on right about now? Uh, right now, we got the cow back on the on the rack. It's been injected. It's been uh, dry rubbed down. It has been secured to the rack uh, because we, when we ro rotate it over to the fire, it's going to stay on the fire till about nine o'clock in the morning. So everything is actually secured down, bolted on, and then in the morning when we flip it, we should not have any problems with the cow shifting and falling into the fire since it's been secured. Uh, it's got six bolts going through the whole thing uh, to be secured well. plan for tonight is to get this thing on in a few minutes? Uh, we're going to be putting it on in about 15 minutes. We're going to rotate it over to the fire in about 15 minutes. And then when's the llama and the rest of it? Uh, that'll be in the morning. If all that goes on in the morning. Brad, push this way. Yeah, I got it. Watch your head, man. Just watch Oh, you see that? Do you see that? Did you, we, you gotta see that again. Let's rewind that and put it in slow motion. There's a guy out in the back right of the screen. <laughs> That's classic. <laughs> All cooked. We're set, baby. We're ready to cook. We're ready to eat. We're letting the, we're letting the, we're letting the, we're letting the meat relax right now, sucking some of the juices so we don't dry it out. Uh, you'll watch us walk around a little while with some whole llama legs. We got all the sponsors out here. We're gonna walk around with some whole llama legs. Feed people like it is. We got the goats ready. The pig. Hey, Reese. Anybody working on the pig? Yeah, we are. Did y'all, is it brown? Cutting it off. The rotisserie pig? The, no, the, the, the cochina pig. Uh, we have full time. Everything good? I'm getting real tired of the cooking channel. Now. <laughs> From Boba Nova 2.0, about to wrap it up, but not before I try what I was kind of coming here to try. I never had llama. We saw it cooking for hours and hours and hours. Randall, our host uh, with the most, has got a little sample. I'll tell you how it is. Take this one right here. Really mild. To me, it tastes a lot like pulled pork. A lot like pork. Maybe a hint of a, a hint of a lamb flavor. Really good. These guys have been great. Bobanova.com. Go see them online. We'll see you next year. See, llama's all right. Tell me about llama, Bill. Was it? Uh, I just like. Yeah, like I said it's. Uh, it was like pork, and actually had a. a at a couple different points there, like pork, and uh, maybe had a little bit of gaminess to it, but you know, like more like a, a a lamb taste. But 
Did they Actually, I preferred it to lamb because it was seemed milder to me. Now the part I had, I don't know if that's all parts of the of the llama or not. Did you get any information on how they source such a, a beast? Yeah, they said uh, they had a, yeah, I'll have to find out. We'll, we'll put the website or whatever you had, but I think they ended up saying they wanted to get rid of that llama. So it was like <laughs> 99 bucks, take it, man. Get in. Uh, but thanks to the guys at Bovo Nova, and uh, hopefully we'll be back next year. We'll see some, some more video from that, too, in the coming uh, coming weeks as we look at some other things okay. here on Great TV. It looked like it was an incredible experience, Bill. I really, really, really want to go next year. Bovo Nova three-pointer. Yeah, real good. Hey, remember, gang, in the world today, it's important to uh, buy local, think global, stay sustainable. And every chance you get, hug your mama. Hug your llama. Hug your llama. <laughs>